Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs and, chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 6. And God is admonishing all of us mm -hmm. for us to be aware of these seven things. Okay. And for us to stay away mm -hmm. from it. It's for all of us. So, and it can be found in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, 17 to 19. So let me read. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Verse 17. A proud look. A proud look. So that's one. One proud look. The second one, a lying tongue. A lying tongue. The third one, hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. The fourth one, a heart that devises wicked plans. Okay. Five, feet that are swift in running to evil. Okay. Six, a false witnesses who speak lies. Mm -hmm. And the seventh one, and the one who sowed this court among brethren. So these are the seven things that is what? That the Lord hates. So for us to even start, if to this year you want to really please God and hate what God hates, Hate. so that God will like you and, and desire you and put you on his favorite list, yes. yeah. then all of us must pay attention to these seven things yes. because this is what God hates. Yes. Meaning that if you don't do them, you will be delighted by God. Yes. And if you also do these seven things, it doesn't matter when you, whether you claim yourself to be a Christian. God will not like you and God will hate you because this is an abomination to God. This is the things God hates. So whatever God hates, we should begin to hate it so that we don't even do it. Yes. So that the devil and the witches and our enemies don't get access to us. Continue. Yeah, so the first one said a proud look. What does it mean when God is saying that I hate a proud look? We all know that for somebody to ha to behave as a proud look, it's like a person who wants his will mm -hmm. above God's will mm -hmm. or above others, meaning that you are proud, you are arrogant. And, 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 and this sin, it can happen to any one of us if we don't pay attention to it because we know that is the first sin that happened in heaven. We mm. know that Satan lost his glory because of what? Pride. pride. So it's very, very important. If our that pride is the first sin. Yeah, it's the first sin. So all of us, we have to watch out that we don't become proudful. We don't become selfish. We don't become arrogant. And we don't, we don't become selfish and pride. So one of the things I'll summarize with pride is don't ever think you are who you are, you got what you got, or you've achieved your success or victory or anything because by yourself. By yourself. Yes. Always, humility simply means I recognize that God is my Lord, my Savior, and the giver of everything. Mm -hmm. And everything I have, I freely give it to Him and I freely ask Him to have His way. Because there are people who I've seen who can be very humble physically, but you mention God and they don't believe that God is the one who made them rich or who, God is the one who has blessed them or God is the one who is helping them or God is the one who is keeping them. They think it's because of their hard work and because their smartness and because of their, where they are coming from. That's why. So yeah. pride is it's, simply it's very, trusting very, God trusting instead of God. trusting in yourself. In, in yourself. And and sometimes when we talk about humility, some people think that humility is you being pious or being mm -hmm. calm. No, it's you submitting your will. To Sub God's will. Submitting your will to God's will. Okay. And then the verse that is so important is James 4 verse 6. He said, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. God resists the proud. So it means that if you allow pride to take hold of your life, what, what it means is that now God himself begins to fight you because he resists the proud. So that's why it's very important that we humble ourselves, that we submit our very will to the will of God. Amen. 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 The second one is a lying tongue. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want all of us to lie. Like sometimes we say, oh, let me just tell a little lie or a white lie. 
but I want all of us to know that every lie is a lie and God doesn't want us for us to have a lying tongue. You should learn to let your yes be yes, yes, be yes and, and your no. nay be nay. Yeah. Learning just to be truthful. And I realized that when you learn to be truthful, you don't have to keep on lying to cover the first lie you yes. spoke. Mm -hmm. Because you, you are just transparent. You see things as they are. Yeah. And the third one is hands that shed innocent blood. And this one is very, very important. In order for you to understand it, understand this, you have to understand what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. Because when we say um, hands that shed innocent blood, God is not just talking about just killing, like physically murdering somebody. But if you read Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus Christ was talking to the new church, I mean the New Testament church, mm -hmm. you know that if you, it, it explains the, what it means by a murder. So you have to go there and read it because we've talked about it when we did the text. Murder, hating without cause. Cause, just hating, hating. without cause, yeah. You can hate a person to the point you wish them dead. You committed yes. murder already. Yes. You don't have to kill them. Yes, and right. that can yeah. be found in Matthew five. If you want to read all the the new the commandment, the commandment that Jesus gave to us, it can be found in Matthew chapter five. And this particular one is in verse twenty one. So Matthew five verse twenty one, it talks about what murder is, not just killing by you hating your brother and plotting wishing evil, evil, evil against them against to destroy them. Them, to destroy yeah, please all them. these things we are saying if you practice them you can't say you're a christian yes it, because this is what god hates and the spirit of god does not allow us to bear this fruit mm -hmm. so we have to make sure that this year if there is any areas of our lives that we've been contaminated by this spirit we get them out. In fact, tomorrow we are going to be doing spiritual cleansing. Spiritual, spiritual cleansing. cleansing. And we'll read all these things back. So you just highlight it because tomorrow the spiritual cleansing is a Lord, we've entered into a new year. Any spiritual and emotional contamination that has already stained us, that will not help us this year to embrace your light, your glory, your goodness. We, are, we ask you to cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. Take away the bitterness, the stealing, the lying. Because I'm telling you, God was telling me that how can you enter this new year with the same old self and expect something new yeah. when the same thing is following you, yes. which blocked you in the first place? Oh, the same, the same old our, our thing. So today, you spare us for today because tomorrow, spiritual cleansing. We are. We will take each one of them, go deeper, and pray for forgiveness. And that the blood will wash us. That this year, we will not, we will part with this spirit, so that then you bring to us the fruit of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, humility, the spirit of Christ in us. Then we have a future for this year. Then we know that God will be pleased with us. How can I say uh, I want to uh, marry the favor of God or receive the goodness of God when the things He hates is what I do? And then I come and say, die by fire, die by thunder. That's why many of we are praying so much, but we are getting little results because it's possible that there are some abominations and things God hates that the devil has contaminated us. And all these things, it's fleshly things, and we can all be God. Tomorrow you tell us about how David were all victims of these things. We, we can't go because we are saving this for tomorrow. Tomorrow, prepare yourself as you fast. You are fasting from 6 a.m., to 6 p.m. and we will be coming back to do spiritual cleansing spiritual cleansing we are coming before god and say lord we can't bring the contaminations of last year into this year and expect something new i can't be doing the same old things that is blocking my heavens to be open and expect that this year you will bless me this year you will prosper me this year i'll get married this year i'll overcome witchcraft this i can't overcome nothing until i deal with my flesh until i deal with my inner demons i until i deal with my own sin issue so tomorrow our deliverance is called spiritual what cleansing self cleansing you know yourself in fact your assignment and my assignment for today within the next 24 hours before we meet again is write down areas in your life you are struggling with areas in your life if you are a gossiper, write it. If you are a liar, write it. If you are an angry person, write it. If you are a jealous person, write it. And then when we come, Lord Jesus, 
here I am. Create in me, O oh God, a clean heart. I'm not here to be perfect. I'm not here to rationalize and give excuses. I'm here to take responsibility. This is the mess I am. I found myself in. This is what I'm struggling in. But this year, I want to get it right. And so help me, God. God loves when we come to him genuinely. He's willing. But if you come in and you you you, you pretend to be holier than thou, and you have all this, 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 this contamination and sin and these issues, that's when you pray all these charismatic prayers and still nothing is going, you are going nowhere with your life. So we need to, this year, come before. That's what we are doing, spiritual cleansing. God says this spiritual cleansing, let's cleanse our body, soul, and spirit from any contamination. Somebody can hurt you so much, the next minute you see the person, you wish them dead. You are a Christian, all right, but you, because of the thing they did to you, you are so bitter. And that bitterness, wish you, you wish them dead. But you haven't killed them, but already in your mind you've killed them. So we are already you are already a murderer. May God be merciful and say, Oh, I forgive him. Even though he did he broke my heart, even though he stole my heart, my boyfriend, even though he caused me to lose my job, and I've been so bitter that some uh, uh, I, I wish I would hear that a car has crashed him, uh, uh, that he has some assorted and died. <laughs> there are so many things that the devil can place in our minds because we are bitter because somebody has done us evil. So we are all human. Yeah, and that was oh, tomorrow you will learn. A heart that devices me. Oh, tomorrow we will go deeper into spiritual cleansing. Gossiping. We are Christians, all right. But when we meet other fellow Christians and your best friend, you also start gossiping about another person. So now you are doing charismatic or gossip because you are now gossiping in another person to another person. May God, but we want to see God's glory. And so this year, Lord, these seven things that you hate, may we hate it. May we not be part of it. May we rather have the fruit of the Spirit. And the Lord, I believe, when, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and turn away from their evil ways and pray, then will I hear them from heaven, forgive them and heal their land. And I believe that that will bring healing to us and, and also, bring and breakthroughs another, to another us. Said, said, no, don't give all this. Tomorrow we are going deep. I want, this is an appetizer. I want people to join, to join us tomorrow. And so do the fasting. Um, the spiritual cleansing fasting 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and be willing to come on tomorrow and write down the things you are struggling with. This is between you and your God. None of us is perfect. None of all us is of holy. Us all of something. us, something we are struggling with, it's which we need goals. And, and, and these are things we want to abstain from. And I'm telling you, once we get things right with God, hmm. the blessings, the, the blessings, breakthroughs, the, the, pro the, the prosperity, the healing, the deliverance, yeah. they will come easily. The devil will not have any legal hood upon and our lives. that was the scripture that I wanted to say, that yeah. Jesus said the devil cometh, but he has, has nothing. nothing in me. Oh, tomorrow nothing. We'll even we will deal with the filthy garment of the yeah. priest and all those things. Nothing. Get this book. It will help you to prepare, uh, pray for, into the year as you fast tomorrow also. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. Uh, chapter 1, we have 50 prayer points to prophesy, pray, and declare and decree into the year. And it will be a blessing to you. Go to our website, www.freshfireprayer.com. The fasting is from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. We meet at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S., 4 a.m. London, 5 a.m. Europe. Before you leave, click like, share, subscribe, invite friends and family to join us. And tomorrow, let friends join us and they will be richly blessed. May God bless you and prosper you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen.